start talking about how Nebraska teaches its children, and it can be confusing. Do we ask too much of the schools? And challenging. Because I don't feel that necessarily throwing money at a problem solves it. Infuriating. I don't care if I have to pay more tax. And enlightening. It's public education. It is not education for a few. <laughs> NET Television gathered a passionate group of Nebraskans, people just like you, to think through what we should be teaching our kids and how we should pay for it. We've come here to central Nebraska, and you're invited to listen and learn as well, because the future of education is an issue that must be determined by the people. Do you feel like your, your daughter came out of school with what she needed? Yeah, I, I think that, that she really did. I think she came out, although that uh, her, um, you know, and I'm not trying to pick on a, an individual school system, her and her entire, entire class were shortchanged as far as her education uh, skills are concerned. I was helping her with, uh, with, with her algebra, and there was one particular question that I couldn't answer. She didn't know how to do it, and it happened to be the same day that we had parent-teachers conference. So I, so I went to the school, and I was armed, and I was going to corner this teacher, and I was going to try to get an explanation on how to answer this particular question. The teacher informed me that she wasn't a math teacher. She really didn't uh, know anything about the uh, teaching math. It's just that they were short a, short a teacher. She was actually trained in another field, and so they had her teaching math to the students. Whose fault is that? Um, there just simply aren't math teachers. The field is really not very appealing to math majors when there are so many other opportunities. And uh, we see that more and more. Uh, I think statistically there's a 25 percent, and the numbers are somewhere close to that, that are leaving after the first five years. And there just aren't enough people to replace them. And it's incredibly frustrating for parents and students as well. Just a quick show of hands. How many people around this table think we have the best possible way of paying for our public schools in the state of Nebraska right now? I think it's flawed because it is too dependent upon the property tax and property is very unevenly distributed so that property is not matched up with students, it's not matched up with school districts, that sort of thing, and we simply have to explore an alternative to property tax funding. And that's going to take us uh, to uh, something in the way of state aid and federal aid, however we're going to structure that. I have a completely different approach because I am not an advocate of changing the sales tax yet again. I don't believe that's the solution because we're not going to reduce property taxes accordingly. That will be the same. We increase this. What happens each year is we exponentially need more for school funding. We're going to keep increasing the sales tax every year from here on out. I don't think that's a good idea. Similarly with the income tax situation. While there were several other small groups taking part in tonight's By the People deliberation, this one was unique. On hand were members of the legislature's education committee. They've been on the sidelines listening to the discussion unfold. When we brought them to the table, the citizens had some interesting questions and opinions for the policymakers. I taught public policy for more than 30 years. The biggest disconnect that I always found was citizens not connecting spending and taxing. How are we able to bridge this gap and, and show citizens what we get for the educational expenditures that we make? We went through a pretty tough period. I believe it was the 2004 session where we came to Lincoln with revenues 15 percent below projections. I'm using round numbers. And so we did about 50 percent cuts and 50 percent tax increases. And it was a year I was campaigning, and I had people come up and say, well, you raised my taxes. I'm not going to vote for you. Well, I asked them, I says, whose grandma you want kicked out of the care home, and what teacher do you want fired? But I think you're, you're correct, and I don't know what to do about it. But there is a disconnect between taxes and the services rendered. And I didn't see too many educators come to our rescue. And as a matter of fact, a certain newspaper branded us as a dirty 30 when we raised taxes and overrode the governor's veto. And I, we could have used a little more support from the education community then. From time to time in our news media, 
there's a concern that comes up about the, the drain of young people <coughs> on our, in our state that are, that are they're leaving. And what we've done what, through education is one of our goals is preparing these young people to go out into society, not be a burden on that, but be an asset and add to it. And so on the vocational track, what do we, what do we have to offer them? I do feel that, and I believe it is part of the essential education, that we start doing some career education very early in the elementary schools and continue that. I do feel that uh, we probably are not doing enough in our uh, secondary schools in the way of technical education. I don't think we should, and I'm particularly concerned about picking out students and saying, well, look, you're you're not really college material and, and uh, you know, you could probably do a real good job at washing cars or I, I'm not interested in that at all. I think everybody ought to be made, made to, to accept the challenge of academic rigor and that ought to be what we do in our, in our K-12 schools. I don't know if the citizens of our state are, are willing to put up with the failures. I mean, to go to a rigorous curriculum, you will have failure on a much larger level than we've seen before. I have to disagree because I don't think it's about marking time. I don't think it's about raising children to feel good about themselves, even though, you know, put head to head against a kid coming in from a different country who's going to get that job. I think they're going to feel worse on that end of the scale when they find out, oops, I didn't measure up and someone else was better. We talk about the, the vocational track and those things. You know, we have a number of students that that is their goal in life. And that's a, it's a fine and honorable thing to do. There's nothing wrong with that. Why can't that be success? Why can't that be achievement? Would you have been a better student and would more students at Hastings have succeeded if there had been a lot tougher standards for you guys? For some, it would have benefited. For some, I don't think it would have. I think it would have pushed them more to dropping out, more to there's going to be those kids that they can't do it, they can't make it. What do we do with them then if we go to the rigorous? I thought this probably come up before now, but consolidation. But I just wonder, you know, where do we stand in consolidation at this time? Is there going to be forced consolidation? Well, I, I can almost see in eastern Nebraska, some of these small school districts eight, ten miles apart. I, you know, I don't see why they don't consolidate, but there's areas of western Nebraska that's so sparsely populated. If you force the town well, it's Sioux County High School, but they only have 20, 30 in the entire high school there. But if you force that high school and grade school to go to uh, another school district, it would be 25, and some of the kids would be going 40, 45 miles to get to their school. I assume that's me. <laughs> he was looking at you the whole time. <laughs> I think I've read your name on this. <laughs> okay, a couple of things. One is the, the issues that you presented are very much a part of our actual funding, funding formula. As Ed mentioned, we have sparse school districts, uh, a very sparse and standard school districts. And basically the, that designation is according to whether or not there is really potential for merger or consolidation. And in sparse and very sparse, the belief is that there is not. So there is no, absolutely no effort to, to force consolidation in the sense of closing buildings. That, unless I'm mistaken, there may be a couple of senators at the table that may not entirely believe that school consolidation isn't going to be a fact of life the way the state is heading. We're losing a school district about every two weeks. So it is happening, and it's happening and has happened for quite some time. I think everyone um, is, is very concerned about their schools and, and do not or do not like forced consolidation. But LB 20, 126, even though it was meant as a, a consolidation bill, does have a lot of opportunities for schools to stay open. And um, I think those protections are written in the bill. It is actually done at the local level. And I think more schools will be allowed to stay open than ever thought that they were, would. There are some small schools out there that have very, very few students, and I think they need to look long and hard at their curriculum to make sure that they do give the children a quality education. But other than that, um, you know, schools try to do what's best for their kids. The By the People project wouldn't be possible without the help of our partners, the University of Nebraska's Public Policy Center and the Political Science Department and College of Education here at UNK. 
but we'll give the Nebraskans who joined us this evening the last word on what they took away from this deliberation. I think it's just a neat interaction with other people to get their views, to listen to other people's ideas. I love the small group. It was just uh, very thought-provoking. We got a chance to really see a lot of the, or hear a lot of the concerns and issues that other schools are facing. I think sometimes we get some really good ideas out of this because there are uh, uh, concentrated efforts on, on coming to the same goal. I think the one nice thing is that we learn that we all do have a role to play and that we can have something to say about issues like this and participate.